I'm here today with Tim Shelberg, president of the Gordon Thomas Honeywell Government Affairs Firm. For the last 14 years, Mr. Shelberg and his firm have become the world's foremost experts on forensic DNA database legislation, public policy, and law. Thank you for being with us today, Tim. So what impresses you the most on the databases that you see worldwide today? You know, today we have 54 countries that have passed legislation or policies to set up these databases on a national basis. And what impresses me the most is the one that is most mature, the ones that are fully implemented, have these incredible hit rates. For example, the United Kingdom has a 63% hit rate. Um, and imagine what happens in that case. A policeman goes to the crime scene, he takes DNA from a crime scene where there's no other evidence, no, no personal identifications, and he can put that sample into that database and get a hit 63% of the time and remove that person, that dangerous person from the streets. Uh, the sheer power of these databases to solve crime, prevent crime, exonerate the innocent is clearly what impresses me most. So do you think it is truly possible to quantify the savings to a country when they've expanded their database? I do. I think that it's obvious that you save money when you have large databases and you hit at an extremely high level because you, you diminish the need to do traditional investigations because with a swab you can find your suspect quickly. Um, but we're also starting to see quantitative studies come out on the reduction of crime uh, when you have high uh, effective databases. Uh, there's a study out of the University of Virginia recently by Jennifer Dolak that shows the reduction of crime that's caused by expanding your database and therefore quantifies the amount of money that you can actually save. Do we know of cases where people would still be alive today if a country had an adequately sized database? Absolutely. A lot of countries have actually tracked this. They've identified thousands of individuals that would have not been raped or murdered if this law was put into place earlier. Privacy concerns seem to be one of the reasons that databases aren't growing internationally. What sort of privacy concerns and policies could be put into place to eliminate that? Well, I think the, the general public and people that advocate against database growth uh, have valid concerns. Um, however, we know that there has never been a privacy violation of a country having a database sample, but we understand that there could be. Uh, to reduce the chances of any privacy violation, I think that there's a number of things you can do in policy, in legislation, to diminish that chance. Uh, the first and foremost, in countries that would allow this, uh, uh, the United States is one that has strong policies against it, but in countries that would allow this, you have to destroy the biological sample. If you destroy the biological sample, you take away most of all the privacy chance uh, p concerns you have. Because what privacy advocates say, it's that biological sample that can be tested for other things to deal, violate your privacy in the future. So 15 of the 54 countries that have implemented this database legislation um, have chosen to, to destroy the biological sample. And when you destroy the biological sample, you then make the DNA more like a fingerprint. There's nothing else that can be done other than distinguish you from me in the database. And so destroying the biological sample is key. Another thing that needs to be done is to control the use of familial searching, searching in a responsible way. Familial searching is, is a very strong ability to solve crimes. But if you can control it, for example, only use it for the most serious crimes, only use it with judicial review, judicial involvement, those are the types of things that keep it simple and safe and privacy protected. So Tim, as more forensic scientists are advocating the use of next generation sequencing in their workflows, what are the issues and concerns that you see and you hear about in bringing NGS online in databasing, but particularly in casework? Well, I think MPS is an amazing tool. Um, it's going to be extremely effective in dealing with uh, mixtures and uh, degraded DNA. Um, but we need to make sure when we implement 
uh, next generation sequencing, that we do it very responsibly. We've always told them that we're only going to enter the non-coding region, and that's the, the CODIS markers that go into the database, database are non-coding, and therefore have no chance to violate your privacy. Now we're talking about doing something different. We're talking about getting into the coding region in, in cases in NGS. So we need to be very responsible. We need to understand that that will be a concern of theirs. And I think the way that we do it the most responsibly is we do not take any data from NGS other than what we need to deal with that particular crime. So keep it small. Go to panels that uh, allow you to take the, only the DNA that you need. Don't do a whole genome. Don't do anything very uh, larger than what you need. Come back and do more as you need it. Um, the less data you put in that system, the better for privacy. Great. Tim, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us today. And to learn more, please visit us at thermofisher.com forward slash HID.